Limbrek Croft is uh, in the Cairngorms National Park. Uh, we're a 150 acre croft, uh, so quite quite large for a lot of crofts. And um, we've real kind of mixed land holding of um, sort of diverse fields. Uh, we've got heathery hill, uh, we've got bog, and we've got woodland. Um, and we moved to the croft in March of 2016. Uh, we're new entrant young farmers. Um, we've been trying to build a new uh, sort of community-based regenerative uh, gr um, agriculture business since then. Before we came here, our, our land hadn't been grazed for, for a few decades. So it was, what you'd probably say, severely undergrazed. And it'd been allowed to just do its thing, but it did mean that it resulted in a lot of um, thick thatch, uh, grass thatch, and a lot of moss mm -hmm. underneath. And to be honest, we kind of worried about that a bit at the beginning uh, until we were given advice not to try and manage against something but work to improve for the things that you want. Mm. Um, so we're now just focusing on boosting the grass and, the, and the, the forbs and herbs and flowers that we want and we're not worrying about the moss at all. We always decided from the beginning that we wanted to um, you know, to farm with nature and, and to, to work with animals that are suited for our environment, uh, our climate and the forage that we have naturally available. And we always want them, wanted them to have a, a regenerative impact on the land uh, as opposed to a, a degenerative impact. Um, so that they would always be, you know, building soil, enhancing biodiversity, uh, not just within the sward, but within the, a sort of more holistic context. And uh, by grazing the cattle the way we do and bringing in chickens in an eggmobile as well, we're now noticing that the moss is receding and we're getting patches of uh, a lot of white clover, for example, which is acting as a, a type of pioneer species. So these are quite fast changes that we're noticing now.